Good morning, everyone. Princess Alethea here. I remembered my tiara today, so I'm going to put on my tiara. Just like Mr. Rogers putting on his shoes. Got to start the show. Welcome to the Alethea Show. I found my Roswell mug. I've forgotten it wasn't just alien Roswell. It's Santa aliens. That's why I got this cup. Because every Christmas, you have to pull out your Christmas mugs. We all have some Christmas mugs. Please tell me you have some Christmas mugs. Well, this one is my storm chasing alien Santa Christmas mug. Obviously, I had to have it. Now, it doesn't say, you know, microwave safe or dishwasher safe or anything. And I don't usually buy cups like that because I enjoy throwing my cups in the dishwasher. But uh, I needed to have it. Last night... I needed some distractions. My distraction so far has been the library. I've been working like crazy in the library. Um, and I was just sort of, I don't know, reaching that point where it got to be like eight o'clock and I wasn't quite sure what to do with myself. I suppose I was gonna go back to reading uh, my friend's book, which I'm part way into, which is nice. But I've been so keyed up, it's tough for me to even lay down and read a book at the moment, which, makes a lot of you understand how rough the anxiety is at the moment between everything that's going on. And right at that moment, my friend Kate popped on and said that her daughter was going to start a Twitch Sings concert. And I just popped in, you know, I was there. I love Allie. Some of you might remember her from the fairy tale rants. I did a fairy tale rant with Allie. And then while I was there during that visit, she won uh, an opportunity to go meet Chris Pratt on the set of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So I gave her a tiara that was much like this. Hi, Sam. And uh, Allie went to go meet Chris Pratt. And because she was tiny and adorable, uh, she snuck a selfie, which was illegal at the time. But if you have been watching Chris Pratt's Instagram, you also know he tends to sneak illegal uh, photos and videos online when he's not supposed to be. So he was totally down with it. And there was this absolutely adorable picture of, of Chris and Allie on her phone, which makes me happy because she deserves, and she's, she's wearing a tiara, much like this, because as her fairy godmother, I had to give her a tiara. Um, so I, I watched Allie sing. Uh, I don't know how to make Twitch sings work, but it sounds like so much fun. I've watched a few of Kate's, and now I've seen Allie's. And uh, there are a ton of Disney songs, which many of us who grew up in the 80s and early 90s love to sing. You know, the Little Mermaid's Part of Your World is My Let It Go. That's the one I like to belt out. Um, I love the Little Mermaid so much. <laughs> <clears throat> but I don't really know how this works. I'm going to have to figure it out at some point. I don't know if I will actually be singing, but you can do duets. There, you can sing part of a song and then leave it as a seed or something and someone else can sing the other half of the song. Hi, Christina. And you can do a duet with people on Twitch Sings, which is, which is really fun. And I love listening to live music. I love that a lot of my friends have uh, the Adam Ezra group tends to pop in live and do random songs. Sometimes it's the whole group. Sometimes it's just Adam. Mikey Mason does his his concerts. If you follow him on Facebook, it will give you a notification like this one when it pops up and he starts a live show. He usually tells you about it ahead of time, but I love hanging out, not just because of Mikey, but because everyone else who hangs out with Mikey in the chat during the concert is a lot of fun. <laughs> the chat is really, really a good time. So then after I got off the concert with Ali, I was again, checking my phone randomly for some reason, and started to see pictures of folks from the Met Gala. Janelle Monae was the first one, which I posted on the page, but then the costumes started coming in. The theme was camp, and I swore I saw somebody wearing a tent. Maybe that was a joke picture that someone posted from somewhere else, but I put an entire album. Yes, I ripped some of them from Getty Images. It says Getty Images. I just pulled them all off of Twitter because I wanted you guys to see what I was seeing on Twitter last night, which were some of the absolute best costumes. Hey, Larissa, one of my other fairy goddaughters. Uh, but 
The funny thing was, seeing all these costumes made me miss Dragon Con. Because let me tell you what, those costumes were good, but Dragon Cons are out of this world. The Dragon Con costumes are out of this world. Good morning, Esther. So make sure you go flip through some of the Met Gala stuff. There is insane things. Uh, the reason I thought of it was because Fairy Godmother Zendaya came with, and I forget the person's name who she came with, but he was dressed as the Fairy Godmother with a wand. And she had this like beautiful princess dress, but it was gray. And as he waved the wand and the smoke started to come from the wand, her dress from the bottom up lit up and became blue like Cinderella's dress in the Disney movie and it was absolutely ridiculous and amazing because it was just this whole spectacle campy campy spectacle get it so the crowd goes crazy and she twirls around in her dress there are a million little pictures of that but then I and I posted someone's tweet about this because I didn't realize it until later as they were walking up the stairs, she legitimately left her glass slipper on the stairs. Yes, she did. So, camp to the nth degree. Lady Gaga came and had a dress and people kept pulling off layers and it was one costume and another costume and another costume. So, you know she had camp down. Lady Gaga just about, you know, she's the definition of camp. But Zendaya might have won last night with the whole spectacle. Tessa Thompson came with some, her hair looks like a bull whip. It's, it's kind of crazy. There was, and oh, one guy has a cloak and when he opens it up, it's an entire theater. The entire theater is in his, is in his outfit. It's a little bit crazy. <laughs> I just, yeah, the costumes were fantastic. And Allie had sung the song Chandelier for her encore. And a woman actually wore a chandelier, just not, not just on her head, but around like a tutu was the chandelier. It's amazing. These costumes are crazy amazing. So now that there are a few people popped in, hello everyone, good morning. Um, the n update on Nicole is that there is no update. We are into day three of Nicole being missing and the crap icing on this crap sandwich is that today is her mom's birthday. So this is where if someone was writing the TV show of my life, which I sometimes joke about, but it really does feel like a crazy amount of things happen in my family that would happen on like Grey's Anatomy. Um, today's, today's Debbie's birthday and this is the part where the writers would wait until the end of the episode and the very end of the day and then deliver Nicole back home to her mother on her mother's birthday. Dear writers of the universe, if you are listening, please write that scene today because that would be great and it would be wonderful if Nicole came home. But we're into day three and I'm looking for distractions, trying not to think about it. So, so there's that. And everybody's post, all my family's posting pictures of Nicole. My feed is all pictures of Nicole. And thank you again to everyone who has shared the information about Nicole, whether you live in New England or not, it is hugely appreciated and thank you for being my family and helping take care of my bio family because we're all a little freaked out right now. Um, let's see, I talked about this, I talked about this, oh hey, I also managed, I, I chilled out enough yesterday to manage to take a nap, which I realize sounds like a dumb thing, but I'm totally like you have to reach a certain level of calm to be able to fall asleep. So I was thrilled that I actually managed to take a nap. And part of the reason I managed to take a nap was because I started writing the next book. I've only done a few sentences on actual like paper on the computer, but in my head, I'm still trying to work out the opening and the plot and how things are going to, because this particular story needs to all happen in a certain way like puzzle pieces. I explained it to a friend of mine and called it uh, Game of Thrones for middle grade audience. So each chapter is going to be about a different character and how they all weave into the story. It's a little complicated. I know I've set myself up for a, a giant hurdle, but I can do it. And it, it requires a lot of um, brainstorming in my own brain, which I enjoy 
because not only do I get to lie down and think of nothing but my book, but sometimes I actually fall asleep doing that. I really do fall asleep telling myself stories. Good morning, Sarah. Hello, Princess Sarah. Mwah. I remembered the tiara today. Uh, so I'm excited that I'm starting this new book. Uh, for those of you on my Patreon, some folks have been able to actually read this short story. Uh, the short story is called The Chaos Crusher's Day Off. And the actual story is going to be, hi Belinda, the story is going to be published in the June issue of Intergalactic Medicine Show. So I will post when that goes live, again, whether or not Facebook shares it, if you can remember in June, or if I'm still doing these little chats in June, we can pop in and go, go um, see the story, read the story. I read it out loud at Dragon Con last year and got an amazing response that I was not expecting, including this, um, I think he was nine, nine year old, seven or nine year old boy who giggled through the whole entire thing. And I thought, you know that, I might have a middle grade audience for this. Perhaps I should, I don't know, think about writing a book. So the story, the short story is about these orc hunters, like a, like you would play in D&D, you would play these characters. Well, it's about all these characters, who is a dark guild of orc hunters, but it's their day off and they decide to play a role playing game and the role playing game is a fairy princess role playing game. So it's very flipped. Hi Vivi, good morning. And uh, you know, the dragon gets to play Prince Quincy or something. Why is it, is his name Quincy? It's something like that. Um, after my friend Quincy Allen. If, if it's not Quincy in the final draft, it was Quincy at some point for Quincy Allen, uh, who I think is also nominated for a Scribe Award. Cheers, Quincy, and all my fellow nominees for the Scribe Award. But yeah, Chaos Crusher's Day Off was a lot of fun to write, and there was a line in it about how Yenry the Halfling was the kind of person who could walk naked into a into a castle overrun by orcs and walk out with five of the most dangerous prisoners and the queen's best horse. And the Chaos Crushers were formed that day. So there's just this off, this, this one-off sideline about how the Chaos Crushers were formed. And that one line is essentially what I'm gonna write my book about. But I need to figure out how Yenry actually pulls this off. <laughs> That's the important part. Uh, yes, it turns out, thank you, Esther, she said it, it might have my son's interest. Um, it does turn out that the books that I have interest me in these last few um, manuscripts that I want to write are definitely in the reluctant reader category. They are just ridiculous and fun and funny, and I do hope to capture some of those young boys, assuming I can get an agent and get it published. I'm still... Sitting at the base of Kilimanjaro waiting to climb that mountain and I'm ready. So that that's adding to my current frustration. I'm frustrated because my publishing career is not moving forward yet until this one thing happens. Uh, I can't go storm chasing yet until we get on the road and the weather looks good and Chris feels better. And I can't do anything about Nicole. So I am sitting here with my hands tied trying to be cheerful and useful and chill. And that is a very hard thing to pull off, let me tell you. Uh, work in the library. I started the blurb quote. Yes, I also worked on my NPR uh, pitches yesterday. So here's how that works. Last year, I got the gig doing a reviews, book reviews for NPR. I'm not, I'm not a voice <clears throat> on NPR, even though that would be fun. Although not this morning, I'm a little verklempt. But uh, my words are on the website. So I started doing one every month, every other month. Uh, my editor really liked my voice. I had done reviews before. I, I started out doing reviews back in 2002 for the Rutherford Reader in Tennessee. It was a free press and they didn't pay me anything, but I had to deliver to deadline. And it was a good thing to teach me about writing and how to deliver succinctly between five and 800 words to deadline. Good morning, Rachel. Hi. Um, oh yes, awesome. Adi loved my review that just went live yesterday or the day before. I'm so happy about that. So Sarah has tagged me in that post. Thank you very much. Um, so, the, so the reviews, uh, I needed to pick a category 
of things I wanted to review. And the trouble with me in this industry, and one of the troubles I had being an Audi Awards judge, was that I know so many people in this industry, I'm a conflict, a walking conflict of interest. And if I review books, it needs to be by people I don't know. Um, I, which is tough because there are some books that I would love to read and review that are written by people I know and I have to skip those and go on to something different. Um, in some ways that makes it easier and in some ways that makes it harder. It's just tough. So I scoured the internet trying to find some books. I pitched a few to my editor and she approved them and we started. A year later, fast forward a year, I have now officially honed how I do this, and this is my process for how I review books for NPR. I remembered that I had a NetGalley account. NetGalley is so helpful if you are a reviewer, if you have a blog, or are any part of any media news outlet, you probably have a NetGalley review account. I've had one since I worked at Ingram, I just never really used it. So I revived my NetGalley account and I, and I pared down through to the teen books that are coming out within the next six months or however long it's, however long. And then I just click on each title. My genre is YA romance, specifically YA romance. At some point I would love contemporary romance. At some point I would love to write YA contemporary romance. So in a way this is also research for me. But I'm not there. Right now I'm concentrating on picture books in middle grade. So I can read all the YA romance I want to. And this is the category in which I am personally familiar with fewer people. But I would love to be friends with a couple of these folks and it's tough because I cannot reach out to them if I want to review any of their books in the future. That part is really tough. So I hope at some point I end up running into them at a conference or something and I'm allowed to gush and talk about what great people they are. But um, I can just fangirl for now and not be actual friends. So I look through NetGalley and I find all the books that, yeah, even just all the books that are coming out that even sort of float my boat. And I put little descriptions and the, the dates they're coming out and who the publisher is. That's partly for my benefit because later I'm gonna have to contact the publisher and actually get the book. While I'm on NetGalley though, if something interests me, I go ahead and request it. Because if the ebook comes in already, great and my editor says yes, then I've already got it. So it's, it's nice to request it. Some of those things are only, you're only able to request them for a small window of time. So while I see them, I'm gonna go ahead and request them and just, just not worry about that. Um, because I've started to become known as the NPR reviewer, uh, a few of the publishers have put me on permanent acceptance, which is very cool. I didn't know that that was a thing until recently. So that is also very cool. And I know that if I come up with anything, I could contact the publisher and get an advanced reader copy. But just having NetGalley there makes it a lot easier. So I pitch them to my editor. She checks off which ones she likes, and then I go hunt them down. I prefer to read the actual book. I like being offline, to be honest with you. Um, one of my other Facebook pages is called Print Books Preferred by a bunch of folks who love having libraries like this and know that print is not dead. <laughs> and as much as we may have eBooks and we do read eBooks, we still prefer print because we stare at screens so much during the day. So I will contact the publishers. I have a whole list of publicity contacts for all the different publishers and I contact them and ask them for an advanced reader copy. I'll give you a sneak peek. This is one of my June titles, tell me how you really feel. And this is an advanced reader copy. Um, this one did not come with, it's got publicity information on the back, release date information on the back. Somewhere it says advanced reader, not for sale. Um, so I will be reading this one to review in the very near future. And then I've got a lot of books lined up. I actually went ahead and scheduled yesterday books all the way through October. Not only am I doing one, sometimes I'm doing two book reviews a month. I'm super excited. Apparently, they like me <laughs> over at NPR, and I'm super happy about that. I would love to keep this job as long as humanly possible. I love this job. Uh, so there have been people popping in and out. I'm sorry if you left because you're gonna miss this. I saved the best for last. It's an unboxing. That's right. A couple of things. Uh, I ordered some compression stockings 
off the internet. This is why, because when you go to the, uh, I needed them for storm chasing, number one, because we sit a lot and my legs hurt so much at the end of storm chasing. It was not something I, I thought would happen. Um, so I had not prepared for that. I had all my back pillows and my neck pillows. I was prepared for the back and neck. I was not prepared for the legs. I do bring compression stockings to Dragon Con, but the ones I have are the ones you get from the pharmacy, which are really, really tight. Um, what I discovered was that there are different grades, different tightnesses of compression stockings. So those are some of the tightest. It's like 20 to 30 uh, PSI or whatever it's called. So I ordered some medium ones. The medium ones I got are just plain black. But um, I also wanted to try the mild compression. Um, and these, because like nurses and people who are on their feet all the time, runners wear these a lot. These come in pretty awesome designs. Look, look at these designs. One, one of these is polka dots. I've got some, I've got some stars because stars are amazing. Um, I've got some, <laughs> oh, these are fun. These are fun. Uh, they're hot peppers. You guys know I like spicy things. Oh, I even got a leaf in there. I, I got some hot peppers. What else is on here? Ooh, oh, I, these were some of my favorites. They're bees. I love the bees. And these flowers, not just because they are flowers, but because they are purple and green. Purple, green is my favorite color and purple is also one of my favorite colors. Fuchsia is also one of my favorite colors. So I'm going to put these on because I have a feeling that mild compression socks, yeah, they're sort of a lot like normal socks, only they're a little bit tight. Yep. This is actually a really nice compression. It's tighter than I thought it would be, but that's good, but not so tight. So there's, um, you definitely wanna make sure that your heel stays here. There's gonna be some extra room at your toe when you put it on, but that's so that your toes don't like get restricted. You want your toes to have a little bit more room to move around on. But yeah, woohoo, compression socks. Um, getting old is sexy, you guys. And because I sit for long periods of time, <laughs> hi Mary, uh, yeah, I sit for long periods of time. Ooh, maybe I'll mix it up. I'll wear one, one side, it will be flowers, and the other side will be bees. That makes sense, right? So this is part of my self-care regimen, you guys, Ugh. is wearing compression socks because never mind the unsightly veins, we definitely don't want things like, you know, blood clots and bad circulation. So I got bees, bees and flowers. Woo, here we go. Bees and flowers. Oh my God, I'm so ridiculous, you guys. <laughs> The bee's knees, thank you Belinda. Belinda's on top of it, she's got it. But that's not all, you guys. I also got yesterday, Sarah, if you're still watching, I got in my Star Wars treasure box. I'm so excited. So you guys can open this with me, if I can find the opening. Um, I think I mentioned this yesterday. If you are on the Patreon, there is a level called the treasure box. And every month you will get something. You don't know what it's going to be because it's always a surprise because half the time I never know what I'm going to be. Sarah's dying. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, but this month the loot came from Sarah and her trip to Star Wars Celebration, which I did not go to. I only got to do it vicariously through Sarah. So this month I received my own treasure box. And this is one of the most exciting things because now I know how other people feel when they receive my treasure boxes. <laughs> Giant boxes full of swag half the time. Um, <laughs> shop the galaxy. Ooh. And then there's really cool Star Wars celebration. This is a great bag. We want to try to uh, get some of these reusable shopping bags for Dragon Con. Sarah and I are working on that. Since it's the 10th anniversary of Sideshow, you guys, we want to, you know, have some great stuff. Ah, So it is a poster, a Galaxy's Edge poster, signed by Delilah. You, some of you may know Delilah Dawson from the Sideshow. She's been a guest on Sideshow many times at Dragon Con. Now she's writing for Star Wars. One day I want to write for Star Wars. 
We'll put that on the wish list. Ooh, here's Zoraida's A Crash of Fate. Zoraida has also been a guest at the Sideshow. My friends are epic, you guys, I'm telling you. What is this one? Ooh, oh, it's a print from Joe Caroni Art Store. And it's Space Mom. We love you, Space Mom! Sarah, you're the best. Celebrate the love. It's Ewoks, you guys. E -e 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 Ewoks. Did you guys watch Ewoks and Droids on Cartoon, uh, not Cartoon Network, but back during, you know, the advent of Saturday morning cartoons. Oh my gosh, this Ziploc bag is just like full of all the swag. It's got pins and and stickers and what is this? Oh my gosh, the Ziploc bag itself actually has Kylo Ren on it. <laughs> this is so epic. This is so epic. Oh, and there's a and there's a coupon for Ziploc bags. So keep an eye out at your local grocery store, folks. Um, I love the Ewoks. I love the Ewoks. I loved um, all the Ewok movies. I loved the Ewok. Uh, loved the Ewok cartoon. Droids and Ewoks was some of my favorite um, shows on TV when I was a kid. And oh, look at all these Ziploc bags. Oh, there's different stuff on them. There's Kylo Ren. Oh, look at that. I would love to write Ewok uh, books or movies if anyone had, or I would love to write Ewok movies. Let's just put that out there. But I would also love, look, there's Ray. These are the little snack packs. I like these. I'm gonna travel with these because these are amazing. Um, if anybody has any connections out there, I'm looking at Sarah because she probably has more connections than anybody I know. Uh, but yes, one day I would love to write specifically Ewok uh, comics, stories, movies, whatever. What is this one? Um, oh, this is the whole little program. It looked like it was actually signed by Drew. I think it was signed by Drew before this was printed. Drew, those of us who are crazy Star Wars nerds know that Drew did all of the epic classic posters. <laughs> Ooh, and a lanyard. Shop the Galaxy, Amazon. So Amazon also sponsored the lanyards. Shop the Galaxy lanyards, and it's got uh, Lego Star Wars. It looks like the Lego Star Wars people. Hold on, there you go. I still haven't quite figured out, if anybody knows how to flip this video uh, so you guys can read the stuff that I show you, that would be great. That was my princess treasure box this month, you guys. So if you would love to get something from Storm Chasing, because that's my next adventure, the next treasure box is going to be the Storm Chasing treasure box. I will purchase you something on my travels and that will be the treasure box. So yeah, the cost of the treasure box covers shipping and the cost of anything I may buy you. Uh, last December when I went to Vermont, everyone in the treasure box got a beautiful little vase from my favorite glass blowing studio in Vermont. That was actually, I, I took a loss on, in December and I spent uh, more than the treasure box actually uh, cost for the year or for that, for that month. But that's okay, because I, I wanted it to be special. I wanted the holidays to be special and to reward, reward, just give something special to my treasure box people that have been so supportive all year. Because I do appreciate that you guys support me and my art, support artists all the time. But I definitely appreciate when you, when you support me, obviously. Thank you so much, patrons and all of you who stop in and say hello in the mornings. Um, what else? Okay, I took a nap. Um, Ali singing and blurbs and library and NPR reviews and unboxing. Okay. Do you guys have any questions about anything? I think this probably about sums it up. Thank you all for joining me for my, uh, Roswell Christmas coffee. Hi, Gareth. Gareth finally popped in. See, I'm about to say goodbye and, and Gareth is here. <laughs> One of the reasons I do these so early in the morning is so that my folks from overseas can pop in and Gareth is in England, right? Um, and Josh uh, the other day was in the Netherlands. So every so often I'll have someone pop in here that is not from America. Of course, I, I also realize that I am totally leaving out 
by doing them this early in the morning, uh, the West Coast is not gonna be able. Tempest, you are never gonna see Tempest on one of these live shows because she is out in Portland sleeping her butt off. Explain the theme of the Met Gala. <laughs> okay, the theme of the Met Gala this year was camp. Like, campy, right? Uh, well, it was camp, and then I guess everyone else was just sort of left to their own devices. But this year in particular, I mean, the costumes are always extra, okay? This year in particular, everyone went over the top. It wasn't just like one or two people and okay, Lady Gaga. It was everyone, okay? So Billy Porter came in on a palanquin, right? And Lady Gaga had her dress that was four different dresses in one, and Zendaya blew everyone away with the whole Cinderella show. <laughs> amazing so it was all campy campy things and I swear I saw someone in a tent but scrolling back through the Twitter feed I couldn't find that picture so I wonder that if maybe someone posted that as a joke uh, maybe it was photoshopped or something but yes the theme was camp so just however you wanted to translate that was what you went with and some folks went with just crazy over the top um, oh one of the pictures I didn't post was I think it's Sarah Paulson had this black dress and it had this really weird, you know how usually some, there's a bow in the 80s, there was a bow on the butt in the black dress. This bow was on the front and it was huge and it was turned sideways, which was just very strange. But the thing, <laughs> the thing about her outfit was the purse. The purse was actually shaped like a champagne bottle. So it kind of looked like she had already been to the after party and her dress was a mess and she's carrying around the champagne bottle. It was kind of adorable. Um, so everybody sort of had a theme, like wearing the chandelier or being the chandelier. Uh, I was thinking camp, like summer camp or camping. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that anybody actually went with the whole tent. I mean, wearing a tent. There were a lot of dresses that were just super over the top and these women could have been wearing a tent. But like the guy who wore the giant cape that is the theater. Um, yeah, I think they just went in that direction of let's just go crazy and over the top and what those of us at Dragon Con would just see as fashion, they see as over the top. So I love that, that this gala in particular was, let it all hang out baby and go crazy. What would I have worn? That is a very good question. I don't know. The obvious choice is some sort of princess dress, but I always like to go the opposite of what people expect. For instance, on Halloween, most people think I'm gonna dress up as a princess since I dress up as a princess 364 days of the year otherwise. But normally on Halloween, I dress up as the Wicked Witch because I'm a princess every other day and on Halloween you're supposed to dress like you're not. So how much is it to get into Dragon Con? I have no idea. You will have to go to dragoncon.org and check it out. Um, I haven't paid for it. I've been a guest for so long. I can't even remember what it was back when I paid for a ticket. Uh, more towards Space Mom. Yeah, yeah. Maybe invoking the whole Princess Leia Star Wars thing. That's a good idea. I might have, I might have invoked uh, Carrie Fisher in some way without flipping off the cameras. That's sort of where I'm. I'm on the other side of the line of that. You probably aren't ever going to see me flipping off people. Cause that's just not my jam. Yes, oh, Mary is, is correct. There are one day passes, they do sell out. Um, and then there are the four day passes. I don't think those sell out. I mean, if you look at the Dragon Con attendance, it's been like spiking crazy in the last few years. So I have a feeling they're just giving four day passes to everyone if you pay for them. Um, they used to be less than a hundred bucks for all four days. So I, I don't know what it is now. But it's not just the, the pass. I mean, you have to, if you go there to stay, you gotta find a hotel room, which most of us book a year in advance. It's like Comic-Con. You gotta figure out a place to stay, figure out how to get there. Just parking there is 30 to $40 a night to park at the hotels. You could park elsewhere, but it just makes your, your life a whole lot more difficult. I follow close behind Carrie these days. Many of us do. I have a... Uh, a sign up here um, on my wall. I have many things on my wall. Um, every time I look over here, it's because I'm checking my calendar. 
see there's my calendar my uh my little um last unicorn print and then here are the calendars Whoop! my little thing came off the table these are the calendars that Kit and I worked on uh, and all the swag stuff for Dragon Con. So my work is up there against the wall. This is my workspace over here by the reference section. I sit on that, on that uh, love seat and that's where I work. And uh, yeah, it's, it's super nice. So this half of the living room is my work, my workspace. It's a very open floor plan. Much of, many of Florida houses are, have this open floor plan. So half is my living room. Here, I'll show you that too. This is my, uh, because I grew up at the movies, right? I have so many posters. So that's my living room side of the living room where I have my TV and my DVDs. And uh, yes, one of the many bikes. My father keeps buying these bikes for me because we still haven't quite found the perfect one. So each one of these is 90% uh, <laughs> great. And part of me wishes I just had the money so I could just go out and buy a bike that actually fits me and works. But in the meantime, my father keeps picking up bikes at garage sales. They like to go to garage sales. I have many things from garage sales. Half of my porch came from people's trash. And uh, the buffet that Lumiere and Cogsworth are on in my foyer, uh, I think we got it for 35 bucks at an estate sale. So there are a lot of estate sales here. There are a lot of old people who die here. It's Florida, so you keep that in mind. But to that end, there are a lot of estate sales and yard sales, and my parents love to frequent them. You can pick up some amazing stuff for very, very little money. Oh, Sarah's a garage sale addict. Cheers. I love doing them. They are, they are a lot of fun. You, you can fall into the hole of buying a lot of crap that you don't need, but as long as you just got, you know, a bunch of singles in your pocket, you're not spending a ton of money on this crap you don't need. <laughs> yes, garage sales are super fun. And in Florida, they actually have them in their garage or in the driveway. Um, they're not yard sales. When I grew up in South Carolina, most of the time it was a yard sale. And here it's usually actually in the garage, which is interesting. But estate sales are fun too, because you can pretty much buy anything that's not tied down. My parents have gone in and asked for um, plants. They've asked for paving stones in the yard. They've asked for silverware. Um, if it's not tied down at an estate sale, you can buy it. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, plants. Think about that. My dad, they have these things called a stag's head that hang from trees that looks like uh, antlers. It's this giant, really cool hanging plant. But they're very expensive and hard to get. And I think my dad actually bought one at uh, an estate sale. Just came home with, uh, with that. I have a job out back. I call him BB, Bison Bones, from the poem In the Luckiest Girl by Beverly Cleary, because I'm a huge nerd. But it's a giant uh, steer, like the bones, you know, dried bones, only it's cement. I have one of those with the antlers and everything, the horns and the big skull. But it's made out of cement and it is, it's in my backyard. I love BB. He sits next to me while I sit out by the fire in the like four times a year I can use my, my little chiminea, which also cost $3. Dad talked the duck guy down from $5. <laughs> it's a giant like stainless steel chiminea and he talked him down from $5. Yeah, I have some amazing stuff in my house. It's very, um, in a way it's kind of junk lady, but like, it's cool junk. I have some really cool junk, you guys. Um, so yeah, sign up for my treasure box. Maybe one, maybe one of these months I'll just send you some random thing from my house. <laughs> all right, uh, I love you all so much. I could sit here and talk to you all day. Uh, boot sales in the UK, that's cool. They actually like have stuff in the trunk of the car and sell it. That's pretty amazing. But you have row houses, right? You don't have garages, so it totally makes sense. And everyone's little garden is usually uh, squared off and not sort of open to the public. Um, so yeah, boot sales actually makes a lot of sense. I love that this is just sort of a, a worldwide phenomenon. Here's all my junk. This might be useful to you. You may have it. That would be great. Hi, D. Love you. Oh, I love you all so much. Uh, be safe and hugs and kisses, and know that my life is better with you in it. 
Have a wonderful day. Mwah.